So what's happening, you've noticed, maybe, maybe not, but we've got cameras in the room uh, because, and microphones hanging because this room is like a recording studio for uh, teachers. Can you think of a more saleable audio product than that? Or, so, uh, but that's the thing. So the, each, each lecture is going to be live streamed while we do it and also archived to embarrass me for the rest of my life. Uh, and you can choose, with the exception of a few days, and we'll go over when you actually have to be here, but you can choose to sit out and stream it wherever you want or watch on the archive as well, if that suits you more than coming and sitting in class as well. Uh, but for that reason, uh, there's a release form here because we are taking, we're capturing your image and your sound while you're in the classroom. So we, we wanted to let you know about that, first of all. And we, we need everybody who's registered in the class to fill this out uh, to give consent for us to do that. Now, if you don't feel like having that happen, um, for whatever reason you don't want to be videoed or audio recorded, there are a couple of solutions. Number one, you sit out and follow the course through the stream or through the archive video. So you actually don't come to class, so we don't have a chance to record you. Uh, the other possibility is there are a few blind spots where the cameras will not capture you while you're sitting in the room. And uh, our dear tech, uh, <coughs> Jody, who's next door, um, could probably come in and show us those if people are really needing to know where to sit. But she did tell me already that around here, she cannot see with this camera, which is pointed sort of out in the middle. Um, and so those of you who are like immediately today don't want to be filmed, I'd say move over here or something. And next class, before we get started, let's get people seated so that those who may want to be in the blind spots can be in the blind spots. If you don't care, which would be my attitude, you know, that's, that's, uh, sit sort of where you like, but let's first of all respect those people who don't want to be necessarily filmed while they're in school, um, right? And it, just uh, if anyone wants to share with me, uh, if you don't have to, you can just talk to me privately as well as I really don't want to be filmed, but does anybody like right away, it's like I hate this idea of being filmed? Cool, that's great. Um, another question is, how many people think that they're likely to take advantage of this option to stream rather than to be here present in the classroom every time? Okay, a few. Could you raise just a little higher? It's easier to see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so maybe a half dozen, maybe up to somewhere between five to ten, which means that we'll have enough seats for everyone who wants to be here to be comfortably here. and. Um, then the rest of you can, can consume the class streaming if you want. Okay, so there's more to say about that just in terms of giving you the dates that you actually have to be present, um, and we'll get to it in the syllabus. But I think it's time to look through the syllabus. Uh, no, maybe I should, uh, well, yes, as we go through the syllabus, it even has my name on it in the top right corner, which gives me the opportunity to introduce myself. Malcolm Cecil, again, as I said, you can call me Malcolm if you wish, or Professor Cecil, or Dr. Cecil. Um, so uh, I've been in the Bay Area since uh, a couple of weeks before 9-11, so that's 2001. I came to Berkeley. Um, I got some higher degree, and at the same time I was working at San Francisco State. I lucked out, and there was some part-time teaching there. And um, then I came to work here in 2008, and uh, I got hired full-time last year. That's my success story. Uh, but it is sort of, it's hard to get a teaching job in the Bay Area, and it's a, this is a great place to work. So fantastic. I still work over at San Francisco State, teach a couple of television criticism courses over there. So uh, any folks who are thinking of transferring over there, I'll see you there. Um, and uh, my background was just, I did a communications, well, like a broadcasting degree in Canada where I grew up. And then uh, I worked for 10 years in television production. I did audio for video and 
then camera work, and then field producing. So it was all kind of news and public affairs television production. In the beginning, I worked on like a, you know, she was just doing a driver job on a feature film or stuff like that. And then after about 10 years, I realized, you know, the broadcast industry was, uh, it's constantly in flux and shows are always getting canceled. And, you know, I wanted to, I don't know, whatever. I wanted to go back to school, so I did. And uh, that's what brought me out here. And uh, then, you know, I really don't do any production anymore. All I do is teach and read stuff. And I got, <laughs> that's enough for me now. But, uh, but I love, I love uh, being in a department where there's so much, you know, hands-on creativity. And, you know, whether people doing audio, people doing video, it's great. I mean, I love that stuff. I spent my whole, since I was 15 or 16, I always knew I wanted to do that kind of thing. Like, like uh, be involved in, you know, television production or, you know, audiovisual storytelling. Let's say that. I don't have any musical talent whatsoever. Those of you who do, hats off to you. That's, that's a gift, um, you know, but, uh, but, but I've always been interested. So the kind of stuff we're talking about in this class, which is the broadcasting industries and what they've become now that broadcasting has kind of exploded into social media and the internet, that kind of stuff has been interesting for, you know, since I was a kid, basically. So I've been following this for a long time. I haven't taught this class in two years because with uh, declining enrollment and stuff, there just wasn't the interest, which again is, I'm so happy you're all here because I like this subject. Um, I just need to get caught up. Um, for instance, just a quick question before we jump in. Anybody seen anything in the news, the news about anything related to broadcasting or media in the last little while that seemed to you really important? Just as a, you know, I mean, it's just, just as a thing, you know, I mean, I could rattle off a couple that I saw, but how about you guys? Anything that, anything that's come up? This is not a trick question. There could be a hundred different answers, depending on, you're shaking your head, so I want to ask you, Kylie. Yeah. Uh, Apple getting inside the television industry. Got you. One yeah. billion dollars of uh, production money set aside. Small amount. Just a touch, <laughs> that's a touch, that's a little thing for Apple, but it's probably, I don't know, more, more than half of what HBO has to play with for the year. So, and HBO has been around for a long time. Yeah, JP? Amazon bought. Washington Post? Broadcasting. Yeah, well, it's media. It's yeah. media. Yeah, okay. So uh, that's, that's big news too. Apple entering the streaming video is, is huge news. Yeah. And uh, Amazon, you know, I, I would have said two years ago when I was teaching the class, the fact that Amazon had created Amazon Studios and was producing original television shows and stuff, uh, that was probably news two years ago. So I, I have to get caught up. Uh, again, I'm really excited to learn about all this stuff. And, and the more you guys can watch, you know, the business pages or, you know, whatever, whatever source you've got in your steady stream of information, uh, you know, bring in, tell us about it, talk to us about it, because we're all involved here in trying to keep our eye on what electronic media is becoming. Anybody else, now that I'm blathering on, anybody? yeah? Uh, Disney pulling out from Netflix, and Netflix being in debt, 20 billion, I think it said. Oh, is that right? Yeah. That seems Lot. Second part of that, I, I think, is iffy, but first yeah. part, I'm hearing everywhere. 2019, they're going to start their own streaming service. Who is they? Disney. Yeah, Disney. Right. Yeah. So I've been hearing that, too. So, so again, whereas two years ago, the last time I taught this class, it was like, whoa, uh, you know, there were a couple of things we were waiting to hear about. Like, number one, the cable bundle was still a big deal. HBO was still holding out. Like, it wouldn't stream itself. It held out because if you wanted HBO, you had to have a cable a bundle with Comcast or with AT&T, DirecTV, or whatever. Uh, but in the ensuing two years, right, HBO has launched their own app. CBS is launching their own app. Uh, now we find out that Disney, which is the juggernaut of, of entertainment corporations now, dominating film production, Having trouble in, with ESPN, for sure, but also owning ABC and the different, you know, ABC kind of sub-channels and stuff. 
uh, Disney is huge, right? And they own Pixar, and so, and they're, they're setting up two streaming services. Number one, a sports stream, hopefully to kind of help them with ESPN. And then the other one is like a Disney branded content like that we could assume it would have Marvel, Star Wars, uh, movies, um, television shows from the ABC catalog and stuff. So all of that could go in there. So uh, that's, that's a big deal. I think as, as we are looking at electronic media today, what we're going to watch is more and more streaming services. People, how many people have, well, demographically, people don't typically get cable subscriptions until they're 30. This, again, is like five years ago. Probably going forward, maybe people will never get cable. How many people have a cable subscription? <coughs> Just a few. You're a cord cutter, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. An another thing we've heard about. And you? I used to. You used to? Ten years. Ten years. OK. So, sorry? Satellite's different. I said cable, but it's satellite. Cable or satellite, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to say something though about that. I was watching, I don't know if I was watching or I was reading an article or something about, it was an economist who was talking about streaming services and how it's, it's going from cable and how we used to pay for so much with the phone, cable, it's all connected. Right. Versus all the streaming stuff that's going to come out in five years where all the companies have their own. And that may be like five, ten years down the road. It'll all kind of come right back into yeah. all grouped in because you're paying. 15 for each one of those so people are going to be like for a while yeah but then you're shelling out 100 bucks just like you were before for 10 yeah or, yeah it'll all kind of come back so it's yeah yeah so, so so the word for coming back is consolidation that's a word we're going to use a lot you know so so and i guess the opposite of consolidation is like fragmentation so if the cable business managed to consolidate like you could we'll bring you 300 different channels as long as you pay us an increasingly growing amount of money starting at 70 and probably going to $120 a month, right? So eventually we all decide we'll cut the cord, cut the cord because because we can just get an app, you know, for 10 bucks, but exactly. Once we've got to get everything on an app for 10 bucks, it's going to go to $120 when we've got our 10 or 15, 12 apps, and then we're going to go, damn, who's going to consolidate these apps? Amazon? YouTube? Disney? Right, right. So they're going to consolidate all of those streams and start selling it to us, and all of a sudden, well, who knows? This is all the future, right? But we could see a future where, uh, you know, uh, the Internet now starts to look more like cable TV, you know, especially if this whole net neutrality Thing goes the way of a few large corporations who will be doing the aggregating and you could see it going that way you know? but we can't read the future so we'll see uh, all right but thank you for that so the all of these kinds of interesting developments which again we don't know the future but we know what's going on now um, is is um, what makes this course you know continually new and also a bit of an exploration we got a textbook. The textbook was recently renewed, but even with that, they cannot keep up with everything that's going on. Uh, but it gives us a good basis. It's like if the textbook isn't completely all about what we need to know now, at least the textbook tells us what we need to find out. You know, where, 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 where the changes that are happening are important. Anyway. I pontificate. So thank you, though, for, uh, for those chunks of news. Those are, those are all good, good ones, interesting ones. So let's think about the course. Uh, let's go through this. So I told you about me. You can reach me by email. My office is right across the hall from Sheila's in the Arts Extension Building, which is just across the street from the um, parking lot here, uh, going towards the Health Services Building. Uh, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. You can see me there. Or otherwise, you can make an appointment if those hours don't work for you. And um, here we are in MUB uh, 388. We're good. So course description, uh, development and impact of electronic media institutions, radio, television, cable, satellite, internet, new media technologies, social, vocational, economic, and political forces in American society. Uh, we talk about history, organization, operation, occupation, programming, political development, regulation, business practices. Uh, that pretty much sums it up. So I think um, 
like if I were you and I was either interested in media as a consumer or maybe even thinking about doing media as a, an occupation at some point, I would want to know like how media businesses work, at least as best as could be summed up in a class like this. Because, you know, the, the, there's not one model for every business, but uh, it's, it's complex, of course. That's why we got so many weeks. So in broadcasting, uh, there's a lot of things that go into affecting the media business. There's the audience, number one, right? Uh, all media are engaged in a competition for your attention. Even if we're talking about social media, Facebook wants you on Facebook or Snapchat. Sorry, let me get down a generation. I'm, t I'm talking to you from 10 years ago again, right? So uh, although I've never been on Snapchat, and I'm not pretending to be hipper or younger than I am, because I'm old, uh, and I am on Facebook. However, Snapchat wants you to spend all your time there consuming uh, stuff on Snapchat and you know, keeping your streaks going or whatever's happening between you and your friends, right? And if you're spending time doing that on your phone, then you don't have any time to watch television or listen to podcasts or, or whatever. So, in some ways, all of these companies, they just want your attention, which means the audience is key, right? They're all after people's time and attention. If they're boring, you'll turn them off, you know? Uh, so audience, real important. And, and audiences are all individuals. Everyone here has their story about what they love, what they like to watch, but audiences are collectives as well, you know? And they can be manipulated and masked. Just think about this. 50 years ago, there was like, 50 years ago? Four television networks, one of them was not Fox, it was called Dumont, it's disappeared. There's a great story to be told about that. But if you wanted to consume media, you could talk to your friends on the phone or listen to the radio or tune into one of four television ch channels, or basically, uh, where you'd be one of about 30 million people watching on a good night, uh, all in the family or something like that, some old show, right? So even if you as an individual had your tastes and you. It's like you were one of those 30 million versus now, God, it, you could be doing anything, right? It's so fragmented. You could watch TV. You could listen to a podcast. You could be on your phone streaming something. You could be, you know, just chatting with somebody. So uh, things are much more complicated now, for sure. There's much more diversity in terms of people after you. But my point just being there that um, we have more choices now, but we have more choices because technology has offered them to us and business has jumped in there. So we need to know about that. The government also has a hand in this. You know, in early broadcasting, they determined how many stations could exist. Um, they determined what you couldn't put on the air. You know, uh, And now, of course, that still exists, but also we've got a lot of less regulated media and we've got technology which makes just about any amount of channels possible for any kind of content true false fake offensive uplifting you know uh, and it's appealing to smaller audiences too so so uh, all of that kind of stuff comes into what we need to talk about regulation what governments do audience practices so the kind of things we can do as an audience Individual tastes, you'll have a chance to reflect on why you like certain types of media, what you do with it day in and day out. So, uh, you know, your, your analysis of your own consuming and what you like and your aesthetic preferences, like, ah, you know, I like horror stuff or I hate horror stuff, or, you know, that, that's, that's an issue uh, that we can talk, that we actually have stuff looking into, you know, we'll be doing stuff about that. Uh, and then the business as well, you know, like how, how companies make money, how they, um, you know, uh, sort of siphon off the creativity and turn it into a viable business. So all of that, business practices, yeah, I think we said enough on course description. <laughs> Meeting times, <laughs> cut to the chase, man. So 11.10 till 12.25. Uh, that means we've got about another half hour or so <laughs> to tackle this stuff. All we have to do is chat about this today. Uh, and so uh, then the uh, other thing is, of course, there's the live stream if you can't make it into class and you prefer to use the live stream or we're going to archive stuff. 
Uh, and that on the next page, we'll, we'll get to that. Student learning outcomes. So the kinds of things that we hope that you'll be able to uh, do once the class is over. Uh, number one, so define terms, methods of operations, laws, procedures, issues related to broadcast electronic media. So that means there's a certain amount of information that is in the textbook that we will kind of filter because there's way too much for any human being to consume in that textbook. We'll try to settle just on the most important relevant stuff and we'll, you know, transfer that over to you. And as much as you're interested in it and it sticks, you'll be able to define and talk about some of those things, which could be useful if you're looking for a media job so that you sort of know how things work when you're first talking to somebody on the phone or something, that, that could be helpful. Uh, number two, consider the history of electronic media technology from tube-based to, to digital. So first, uh, first three weeks, there's a fair amount of history, and then uh, we'll always kind of dip back for historical parallels. Um, you know, history doesn't always tell us how things are going to work out because the world changes, but um, one way to look at history is uh, that it teaches us that there is no sure bet that uh, what looks like absolutely obvious, you know, that television would work or that uh, we could pay for TV with uh, advertising was not at all clear when television first started out. And as we go forward and, you know, we've got VR and uh, we're looking at different applications of it and trying to figure out, well, what kind of platform could that exist on? What kind of, what kind of content could we put there? Early television was like people would start a station in their garage and you'd have the people down the street because they, you know, sung a cappella or something. But once they'd been on a few times, it's like, what the hell else are you going to put on that channel, right? So, um, so there's always historical parallels that are interesting. And again, I, I think if you look at it rather than that history determines the future, rather than look at it that way, which I think is too simple and inaccurate, if you look at it more like history lets us know that the future is wide open <laughs> with certain constraints built in, I think that's a great way to look at history. So we'll try that. Uh, number three, appraise the historical significance of milestones in broadcast history. More history. So the way we tackle history sometimes is to you know, talk about big events. Um, Disney starting to stream might be a big event. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, four, assess current trends, just like we were talking about. What are the current trends? Yes, the unbundling of cable. Uh, the jump of various networks, uh, <laughs> businesses into streaming. That's definitely a trend, right? Apple's doing it. Disney's doing it. CBS is doing it. Uh, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, the trend towards uh, streaming services uh, rushing to create their own content. Netflix is doing it. Hulu is changing as well. Original series, putting tons of money into original programming. Why? Because sooner or later, Disney will withdraw all of their stuff from Netflix and from other streaming services, and they'll be dead in the water if they don't own content. You know? So every, every media company that can is trying to produce so that they have an original library that they can stream. Uh, you know, CBS, they don't care if there's not that many people watching you know, the successor to the Big Bang Theory or some sitcom. Uh, they use the television distribution as a kind of a publicity front end. And what they want is then to have the library of all those shows that they can stream for the next 10 or 20 years or longer. You know, if, if people still generationally like to see what they saw when they were 16, when they're 36, you know, which is what's going on people my age. And I'm constantly being kind of, you know, the, the, the nostalgia nugget is dangled in front of me for my particular demo, you know? That's what Netflix is doing. So, so that, all of that le means that library is important. You've got to own the stuff. So that means that you're not, gonna, you're not gonna hire the hottest studio in Hollywood to produce. You're gonna buy them and <laughs> make them produce for you, you know? <laughs> that's the Disney approach, because they got so much money. I went on this junket to Disney, like to Burbank, where they bring poor, you know, professors down for three days and they talk to you and like, but it was really very interesting. And they had just bought Marvel at that point. 
And it was kind of like, whoa, what are you going to do with Marvel? Duh. <laughs> it's like they knew what they were going to do with Marvel for sure. You know, um, and it was, of course, the best thing they ever did. But it cost them billions of dollars. But they could do it. And they just figured it out. Well, we spend $5 billion, we may, I don't know how much. Again, that's stuff that I need to get back in my head. Seven, evaluate issues regarding the organization, methods of operation, business practices, and stuff like that. So, so I guess issues, you know. Um, trying to evaluate what's going on and is it a good thing? Is it a good thing for programming diversity? Is it a good thing for consumers? Is it a good thing for art? You know, <laughs> is it a good thing for public information? Which I think is, you know, an important thing now. You, if you're just going after attention, you can put the most, you know, egregious lies up there. And if you get a lot of attention, then I guess you've succeeded in a business sense. But if everybody does that, how are we going to know what's going on? You know, that'll be my question to you guys anyway. So we'll see about that. So that's interesting to me. Compare and contrast different audience research methods. So you know, um, historically, broadcasting pays for itself by selling advertising. How do we know why one show is more mm, useful as an advertising vehicle than another? Audience research, the rating a.k.a. the ratings, the Nielsen Corporation, probably most people heard of it, right? Uh, so, so they analyze who's watching what. They are desperately trying to keep up with what everyone is doing. Um, they used to do sort of surveys with set-top boxes that everyone's heard of, I'm sure. But now they need to add in, you know, how many tweets are happening about this show and so on and so forth. How many people are streaming it on their phone months after? So all of that have to they have to try somehow to keep on providing that service to the industry of telling us what is the most watched you know who if if the game is like to capture people's attention they're the people who ta count it count those eyeballs you know but it's more and more difficult and they're scared they're very scared that somebody else in silicon valley will create a better way to do it you know, like have your cell phone listen to everything you do all day long and thereby capture every single bite that you are consuming from one of these companies. And so Nielsen has to, you know, run ahead of that to make sure that they don't get taken by somebody else the way iTunes took the music industry, you know, which was a, a, a big mess for the music industry. Cool. Evaluate emerging technologies and discuss their applications. So, you know, you guys are probably on the cutting edge of, of consumers. You're being addressed with all kinds of, you know, new stuff to look at. And, and so we'll have a chance to talk about some of that. And again, I, I, I have a lot to learn from you folks because, um, you know, it's just the nature of the game that, you know, you, you're sorted into demographics and each kind of Generation has different ways of doing stuff. You know? Cable bundle, 10 years old, right? It's like cable bundle was reality for me, you know, but no longer. So the required textbook is uh, in the bookstore, and there's some in the library as well. Electronic media, then, now, and later. Um, and then uh, we also have uh, Canvas. So Canvas is the City College learning management software. And um, it is uh, what I'm going to be using for a bunch of different things. So um, how many people are uh, uh, not familiar with Canvas right now? And OK, a few. So uh, uh, maybe we can, uh, first of all, there, there's a, a group of students who can come to the class and lead a little bit of a how to use Canvas type of tutorial. And I'd be happy to do some of that uh, maybe just after class today, or maybe we set up something before class next week, like next, next class or something. Let's, let's check that out. Because Canvas is important, uh, especially for those who will be uh, consuming the class uh, by streaming. Um, we're going to have to um, sort of stay in touch through Canvas. 
So uh, this is just the log in here, and I'm going to go never. And uh, so for each of your courses, you probably have a Canvas uh, course associated with it. And if you have online classes, it's all taught through Canvas. Um, so this is our site for now. So once you log into Canvas, and I can help those of you who are not familiar, you, you will get to, uh, you'll get to this site. And uh, right now, there's, uh, I have a lot that I've hidden from you because it's still not quite ready. Probably next class, I guess it'll be ready. Um, but basically, week by week, things will be, um, there are modules for each week of the class. And uh, those will, uh, you know, as we go along, there's content associated with those modules. There's um, instructions as to what chapter we're going to read in the textbook. So like next week, we'll start out reading chapter one. Uh, and there's, you know, just little things that are uh, associated with that that, um, that we can use. And also, uh, all of your assignments, you can turn them in through um, Canvas. That's the way I, I uh, actually need it to happen. So like if there's a little writing assignment or something, you can post it up through Canvas. Um, and also, you can watch your grades in the grade book as well. Uh, and when all of this kind of opens up, you'll have more options over here as to how to navigate. But and like I said, next class probably. So you can look at your grades in there as well and sort of always know what's going on. And uh, there's also an email function in here. And it's sort of preferable to me if you communicate with me through this because it sends me a message. It's like, oh, you know. Um, so and so wrote to you, so then I can just keep keep a track of all that, because uh, in my faculty email I get like endless, you know, bake sale announcements and stuff like that. It's like, oh gosh. All right. So that's Canvas, and um, if you if you are consuming the course, if you're if you're streaming the course, uh, which means you won't be in the room with us, uh, there's something called chat in Canvas. Uh, as long as you're logged into your um, Canvas, uh, you can post questions, comments, or whatever. So if I'll always have this open while I'm live streaming. And uh, if you want to let me know that you're there, you can say, Whoa, hey, I'm here and such. And if you want to ask a question or make a comment, I'll try to keep an eye out on the chat window and, uh, and uh, relay that and bring that into the discussion, I'm trying to keep everybody kind of um, involved, basically, whether you're physically here or not. So that should be interesting to see how that works out for, for me. So do remember that that's there. And uh, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, well, let's get into uh, next page, attendance policy, because this is just where I was going to go with this. So um, it's cool with me and with everybody if you are not attending and instead streaming or consuming the course through the video archive with the exception of these few dates. Now, before we get in there, let me reassure you that uh, the fact that you're not physically present uh, will not uh, automatically reduce your grade. So in other words, the grade, I, I have to track who's in attendance every day. But that doesn't mean that I take points off for the fact that you're not here. Um, so what I'm saying is that by consuming the course through streaming or archive doesn't mean that your grade will go down. Okay. You can still do fine just, uh, just that way. But you do have to be here either today or next class, just so that uh, I know that you're participating in the class. Um, I'd like you to be here for the midterm exam on October 19th. On November 7th and or November 9th, uh, we're going to have sort of industry news presentations. So just the way we kind of spontaneously came up with a few news items here. I'm going to ask people in November just to uh, kind of go a little deeper with their appreciation of some event that's happening right now. So just as an example, you know, Disney sets up two streaming services. That would be, you know, a great topic. And maybe two, three people could get together and, you know, Google News research a little bit about what's being said about the deal. And, uh, and bring that to us in like a five minute presentation or something. So we will, at the midterm, we will you know, see who's with us and actively participating. And 
we'll, we'll all be here on the midterm, so we'll get people together in groups of two, three, and then uh, schedule. So you'll know whether you're here up on November 7th or November 9th to, again, just tell us a story about some interesting thing happening in the electronic media businesses. You know? And all of this will be clarified, of course. And then finally, you have to be here for the final exam, uh, which is on uh, December 21st from 10.30 to 12.30. Any questions about that? So that's when you have to be here. Otherwise, you can keep up by streaming in archive. All right. Um, so the address to the live stream is there. Um, also, I'll be letting you know uh, exactly where to go to see the archived versions of the class. I guess we're filming today, so that should be pretty soon. Uh, if your next paragraph says, if you're watching uh, the stream, please get online and uh, chat with us. Let us know that you're uh, actively involved. Um, that's a good thing to do. Uh, the next paragraph talks about the importance of those releases. So before you go today, I'd like to gather all of those up. And um, another, another thing I got to tell you is once in a while, the stream goes down. Uh, which is frustrating if you've set aside time for uh, watching live with the class, and I'm very sorry if that happens. And please let me know through chat or something like that, hey, stream is not working, uh, so I can, you know, uh, Jody will know and, and we can see if we can do something about it. Yeah? Isn't that kind of should be part of the course, though, because electronic media does that <laughs> well. That's very meta. That's very meta. Yeah, I guess if, if you are a Netflix and, you know, everyone is, uh, is losing their stream, that would be a terrible thing. Yeah. So uh, I, I guess um, you're absolutely right. Um, I'm afraid that if we were a business and we, our business was video streaming, we'd be, we'd be in trouble. So, you know, it's gotten a lot better. Uh, and uh, so hope, anyway, let me know if something goes wrong with the stream. Uh, if it does, be aware that all that we talk about in class um, is kind of, uh, you know, there are PowerPoints that are going to be available on the site that I'll be kind of flashing while we talk. Um, there's the chapter in the textbook, which I hope you have read and recommend that you read, uh, so on and so forth. So what I'm saying is there are ways of keeping up with what's going on even if the stream goes down and you cannot hear my precious insights uh, or the great discussions that we're going to have. Okay, so that, that you have to be able to follow along if that's the case. All right, um, so the grading policy, the first paragraph is to reassure you that you will not have points deducted uh, by not attending the class but consuming it through streaming, which is great. Now, the, another thing that concerns me is that uh, every semester uh, people um, run into um, the doldrums uh, or worse, they run into problems in their life so that they cannot be present. And uh, that's usually a good sign to me as a teacher when a student disappears for a few weeks and I don't hear from them that something's wrong. And when I see them again, we've got a touch base and find out like what happened, what, what is the state of their progress in the course, uh, was there um, you know, a, an ad, a good, good enough reason that they were not present, not participating, we can catch up. I can't do any of that given this streaming uh, option in this class. So what I need to see is you know, regular participation in terms of turning in assignments on time. Uh, or if, if they're going to be late, briefly late, and you get a little bit of a penalty, but I know that you're participating. If you disappear and you don't do any work for a few weeks, it's like it may well turn out that you just put yourself in such a bad situation in the class that you can't go on. Um, so uh, this whole streaming option kind of requires a little more uh, um, tenacity on, on your part. I hate to say it. So uh, that, that's going to be um, borne out just in the kind of late work policy. Uh, uh, and uh, of course, you can always let me know that you're participating through the chat. So again, do, you know, when you do log in and get into the chat, just say hi so that 
a post is here, and at least I know that you're watching the streams and participating, which is comforting. Cool. Uh, the add drop policy. So uh, again, since I can't sort of get a sense of whether you're participating by you being in the classroom, although if you are in the classroom, that's great. Uh, so it's going to be sort of like, I'm looking at the assignments. Are you turning stuff in? If you're not, I'm going to be calling you. Uh, please, on the, on the release form that you have uh, worked on, this thing, could you just jot down a, a phone number that I could reach you at, just in case you, uh, I need to, like, last minute, hey, I'm going to drop you from the class, but I want to hear from you and see if that's okay. All right, thank you. Um, in bold on page three, it says, please note if you participate in the free city program. So it's the most wonderful thing that um, the city and county will pick up the tab for uh, courses that uh, some people take at City College. I think the thing that wasn't uh, publicized enough is that if you benefit from that program and the city pays for, you know, if you take this class, it's three units, it must pay about 140 bucks or something for uh, you. Uh, but if you uh, drop the class and don't complete, you are liable for that $140. I don't think that that has been said enough. So I wanted to draw that to your attention. Uh, if, if you drop the class, don't finish it. Um, after September 1st, in fact, uh, you will be liable for uh, the, uh, um, the money that the city would have paid to City College. And that could be, you know, just a real bummer to get a bill for what you thought was free um, because uh, you stopped attending class and you fell so far behind that you got withdrawn. That's, I could see that happening. So uh, let's vow to communicate well about this and uh, look, take a look at realistically at your schedule by September 1st. If you don't think you're going to want to be here until December 21st, you know, uh, it's, you should withdraw before then if you are benefiting from the free city program. If not, things go as they typically went before, and you know that you have until sometime in November to withdraw uh, and pay only a partial amount of your fees and receive a W on your transcript. So um, the, the, the bold text there is just for the free city uh, program. And I found about the, uh, out about this on Friday, and I, I realized that I'd never heard about it, so maybe the students hadn't heard about it. So I'm just warning people that you could get a bill for if, if that was the case. Okay, then assignments. What are we going to be doing? And we got ten, 10 minutes left on this. I think we're, we're doing okay. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is a, a little media use diary. So I'm going to ask you to keep track of uh, what you do with media in a day. And uh, I'll... Uh, ask you after that for your thoughts about what you, you know, how you use media and maybe uh, draw a little comparison with somebody from another demographic or another different sort of media use uh, pattern and uh, see what you think about, you know, what, what that does for the individual, for yourself, for the kinds of information and, and entertainment that you get in your life and, uh, you know, and also, what different media m might mean to you, you know? Uh, I have become a heavy consumer of podcasts. Anybody else listening to podcasts? Okay. Oh, lots of folks. Okay. So you might ask questions like, well, do I listen to less radio now that I listen to podcasts? Uh, is it important to me the, you know, that podcasts, like, as it is to me, I'll listen to a podcast if I wake up at 4 in the morning. It's like... I'll put on, you know, something and then I'll just like basically fall asleep while listening to it. It's great. It's a little lullaby. But that's a really different sort of media relationship than I ever had. I never turned on the radio at 4 o'clock in the morning and went to sleep to Terry Gross or something like that, you know. So interesting things come of this, uh, endlessly interesting things. So that's a brief writing assignment. Uh, then on September 19th, we're going to be doing some TV programming. So we'll be learning about how television networks and cable networks actually decide what time to put what shows on. And then we'll just kind of get together and 
program our own little channels or stations uh, uh, with using some of those ideas. Um, so that's a thing we'll do in class. Um, we got a term paper coming up, and I'll talk to you well in advance of that. There are assigned topics, but they're all about media, about the kind of things that we study, and they're four pages long. There's two of them, one sort of that one, and then there's one at the end. Uh, there's a quiz, uh, so um, I'll be shooting some quiz questions at you every couple of classes or something, and then I'll be reviewing with you uh, before the quiz, and then the questions on the quiz are, in a way, a review for the questions on the midterm because they're going to be similar. So it's a way of uh, just um, uh, getting a look at what kinds of questions would be asked on the midterm and on the final exam. We do quizzes on the way there. Uh, advertising analysis. Uh, so in October, when we talk about advertising, uh, we'll look at a few uh, different advertising things and talk about uh, you know, given again that we'll be learning a little bit about how advertisers target audiences through electronic media, uh, we'll learn a bit about that and then we can look at particular ads and, you know, analyze them based on that. Midterm exam, multiple choice, uh, I don't know how many questions so far, but uh, between 25 to <clears throat> 30 probably, but I'll let you know well in advance of what that is. Oh my goodness. Um, industry news, as we said, November 7th and 9th, at the midterm, we will sort this out because everyone will be present at the midterm. So we'll get little groups, uh, come up with some topics like what's new and interesting going on, what current trends in the media are, and you'll get a date, either November 7th or November 9th, to do a little presentation on that. And you guys can coordinate, I don't know, through Google Docs or through whichever uh, ways are necessary. Maybe, in fact, we can get people who are streaming sort of an online kind of forum in which they can work, and then those who are present in class, they can collaborate in class. We can work that out. There's another quiz. Uh, there's a content genres uh, little thing where we talk about different types of television shows, reality TV, comedies, uh, anthology shows, uh, you know, premium cable dramas, uh, uh, game shows, news shows. Uh, so we, we talk about uh, sort of, you know, the distinguishing characteristics of those shows and sort of how they now exist across different platforms. So that could be interesting. And then your second term paper is due at the end of class. And uh, it, although you can always negotiate with me a, a different kind of topic, but what I've found is usually by that point, people are happy enough to write up on the topic, the, the, the television show that they analyzed, the, the type of TV genre that they analyzed. They typically write about that for their final essay. But I have other topics, or I'm open to hearing different topics from you at that point for your final essay. Yeah, JP. Yeah. Uh, well, the midterm definitely, yeah, the midterm definitely is. The final exam, I'd say, I, I don't usually like to go back to covering the whole semester on the final. So the answer is no. The midterm would be everything from chapter one to chapter seven, and then the final exam would be like chapter eight and on. And if there are any, you know, if there are any, uh, um, uh, you know, big principles that we want to call back to, I'll let you know. Okay? And you know that I review pretty extensively before those exams and stuff. Won't be quite like audio class, but almost. So you can see the point breakdown for all of those. Your grade will be up on uh, Canvas for you to look at uh, at, at all times. Um, questions about the assignments? More? Yeah, Jenny. So the media use diary, are you suggesting or is it required that we say start today or at the beginning of the next class up until the due date? No, I, I typically ask people to pick one day that okay. they analyze, you know, and I say, you know, don't pick the day that you don't do anything with media. Try to pick your most active day or a representative day. And would this be on various days that you would direct us to pick it a day and we would go ahead and Oh, as soon as I can get the assignment up and open it up on Canvas, probably next class, okay. I could sort of say, okay, from here on in, you choose the day and it's due on September 7th. 
Okay. Other questions about assignments? Good, cool. So accommodations. They asked me to read this out, so let me do it. If you need classroom or testing accommodations because of a disability, uh, have emergency medical information to share with me, or need special arrangements in case the building needs to be evacuated, or I might add uh, for anything else uh, that the uh, DSPS uh, can help with. So that is a service located over in the Rosenberg Library. The phone numbers are there, and you can also go over and see them. Uh, they have a lot of staff there, and they're basically dedicated to helping you do your best while studying at City College. So the types of things that we just mentioned there, they can help you with and more, you know, uh, based on, uh, you know, if there are particular things that you need to do well, uh, you can determine those with them. They talk to me about it, and we all make sure that we do everything we can to get those to happen. So uh, do take advantage of that and begin that right away. And the one way to begin is just to tell me that there's a, uh, something going on that we can attend to and then go over to Rosenberg and go see DSPS or phone them and make an appointment. And they can deal with that. Okay, cool. All right, plagiarism uh, is important for this class. Uh, it's, a, it's an issue because there's so much of it is writing. Um, and so uh, it says here basically in the, the, there's language throughout the student code of conduct in City College. This is one of the rare classrooms that doesn't have the student code of conduct up on the wall. Uh, however, in terms of plagiarism, it's defined as the unauthorized use of the language or thoughts of another author and representing them as your own. Uh, intentional or unintentional plagiarism are equally serious offenses. Um, so this would also cover cheating on an exam. Uh, so basically uh, plagiarizing somebody else's answers and presenting them as your own would be equally a problem as would copying an essay off the internet or, uh, for instance, using brilliant citations without actually identifying the source. And especially in that last one, it can happen in term papers. Not everybody is like the, the, the most uh, attentive to the rules of citation. We will look those over before we, you know, the, the, the term papers are due. Uh, but it's just another thing to remind you of is you, you're not necessarily expected to uh, have uh, brilliant, perfectly formulated, rhetorically airtight uh, insights into what you do. I think some people turn to plagiarism because it's like, oh, I got an essay. It's like, I don't know what to say. Uh, you know, uh, there's hopefully a lot of this will, um, uh, you'll have ideas about what you'd like to write based on what we talk about in class and your own responses. And so uh, uh, what we're looking for are your insights combined with responsible uh, use of actual factual information that's out there, be it the news accounts or other, uh, you know, credible sources on the internet. So all of that, we need to take a class and talk about that type of thing. Uh, and I know you're, many professors do that here. Uh, but we also have different styles, so you'll find out how I think you should do it. And, um, and hopefully plagiarism will not be an issue. Uh, if you're all, if you're worried, um, be sure to cite whatever you've found somewhere else. You know, and uh, if you um, are uh, saying, "Oh shit, how do I cite this?" Uh, I don't know. Well, let me just leave out the citation. No, it's better to actually do a poor job citing something than not to cite it and just put it in there and then have me think that you plagiarized it, because I won't know that you know you maybe just didn't didn't cite because you didn't remember the <laughs> source or didn't know how, what should go first or second. Yeah, just go ahead. Better, better to make an effort than, you know, be, have people think that you're plagiarizing. Uh, so what could happen if you're caught cheating on a test? You could get a zero. If you're caught extensively plagiarizing a term paper, like basically, you know, I'm trying to give a grade based on how I think you've learned the material. And so if you download a paper from the internet and give it to me, it's like, I have no idea how you, you know, maybe you understand all of it, but you just don't like writing. I'm sorry, but the plagiarized thing is like basically tells me nothing, so I give you nothing. So a zero could come out of that. And then worse comes to worse, there's discipline at the college level 
which uh, I've never had to use, actually. So there you go. Usually people in this class, they, you know, write something original that they care about, and they, they do fine citing. And then finally, there's a schedule all the way down there, and we ran out of time. So uh, check out the schedule. And um, so we're done for the day, and turn in the uh, release form to me.